Hey, how it's going guys? In this video, we are going to explore GPT-OSS, a newly released open weights LLM by OpenAI. After a long wait of six years, OpenAI has released any open source model or open weights model to be specific, right? They have been building commercial models as we all know, but now they have proven the ecosystem wrong that they still, you know, they're trying to, they're, they're trying to say or portray that they're still the best out there when it comes to building LLMs and we should never take them lightly. So if you look at here on my screen, I have something called introducing GPT OSS. In this video, my main agenda is to show you that how you can use GPT OSS to build a RAG retrieval augmented generation system, not only just showing you these blocks or hugging face models that everybody is probably showing to you right now, if you have seen some videos, but the idea is to show you building RAG actually. But we'll quickly go through some of the collaterals which are available from the OpenAI side. Now, if you look at here on my screen, this is the blog. This is the official blog. It says introducing GPT OSS that has been launched yesterday, August 5, 2025. That's the first thing. Two models, 120 billion parameters and 20 billion parameters. Post the frontier of open weight reasoning models. This line seems to be generated from Chad GPT actually. When, the, when I see the words frontier, I, I, I basically, that's what I, that's why I think. Uh, available on Hugging Face. Let's go to Hugging Face. So you can see here we are on Hugging Face, GPT OSS 20B. This is the 20B model. There is what similar 120B models as well. So if you go on OpenAI model cards, you can find out those details. You can see there are only collections uh, on the OSS family. Well, 120 billion and 20 billion, right? Uh, and you can see all the things are available. You can read the research and all. I'm not going to cover those research papers. The same thing that other videos I've been talking about. It's it's huge mixture of experts, certain tokens, certain billion of parameters are activated, you know, per tokens, so on and so forth. I'm not going to talk about all those things which are already there. Okay, if you want to try it out, you know, you can try it out on gptoss.com. You can see this is where you can try it out. You can see it's a bit slow right now, a lot of bandwidth, uh, and a lot of bandwidth right now. Uh, you can see it says GPT, OSS 120B and uh, 20B. You can say I asked a question, how far away is the sun from earth? And I have GPT OSS 20B model that has been selected by default that I selected. And you can see it, I have selected reasoning level as low. So there are different types of reasoning more, uh, categories, you know, high, medium, low. If you keep it low, it will take less time to think, it will reason less, and it will give you uh, an output like this that you see. The average distance from Earth to Sun uh, is about this, this, this. You can ask stupid questions like what is 2 plus 2 just to test the model. Uh, on the internal evaluation benchmarking, the model has performed really well. They competed well with O4 Mini actually, uh, you know, this the bigger one, 120B. Okay. The 120B is for high-end laptops uh, and 20B you can run on device using VLLM. Okay, so it's also available on VLLM. If you go on Hugging Face, you can find it out basically. Now, let's say if you go here on GPT OSS 20B, you can find out all those details. Now, you can see this is available through Transformers. And I don't, I'm not interested to just take this and just paste it and do anything here. Okay, that, that's very easy. If you want to find some cookbooks, okay, OpenAI has given a cookbook for GPT OSS. You can find the own uh, using Hugging Face Transformers. You can run this on Tensor RT on device uh, on NVIDIA. Uh, you know, you can also run this using VLLM for accelerated inference, right? You can do that and also available through our favorites, Olama. These are all available. But what I am doing here in this video, I, I want to show you this rag that basically I have been building so far with this one. And I want to walk you through that. So if you look at here, this is NVIDIA NIM. Okay, so I'm using NVIDIA NIM basically. So I'm using... Uh, NVIDIA name, which is an inference microservice from NVIDIA. It's called NVIDIA uh, inference microservices. Uh, uh, you know, you can do it through either self-hosting or you can use it through their cloud, right? So I'm using their inference endpoints. You can see this is how it looks like, GPT OSS 120B. You know, you can ask these questions, so on and so forth. Uh, you know, you can see 9.8 is a larger number. Uh, and this is what it is. So I'm using it from this. Let me show you what I have been doing. So I'm using Langchain NVIDIA AI endpoints right here, uh, Langchain community, Langchain tech splitter, and I'm using FAS for a local vector sh storage, store. It's not a database, by the way, it's a store uh, indirectly, basically. And you can see I'm, I'm using NVIDIA embeddings and chat NVIDIA module. Chat NVIDIA module will give me access to this particular model that I want to use, which is nothing but GPT-OSS. GPT 
And then I'm using web based loader because I want to show you quickly that how you can build a rag using NVIDIA NIM and using that GPT OSS LLM, right? You can see we have uh, vector stores, fast, a uh, Facebook AI search system, right? Again, by Meta. Okay. And I think Zuckerberg would have a long day yesterday, right? Uh, after seeing this model because he has spent billions of dollars, right? To hire some star people globally. Okay. Uh, but let's see what Meta comes up with. Then we have text splitter here. We have recursive character text splitter. We have chat prompt template. We have structured output parcel and we have chain because I'm going to do runnables. Uh, and that's what it is. I'm using NVIDIA micro, new microservices, their inference endpoint. So that is coming up from there. Then what I did, I took this uh, get started with Langsmith docs. You can see this is a web URL that I've taken here that I want to show you. And I'm just loading it over here. The moment you load it, this is how the docs looks like. You can see the docs. You know, you can see this is what we have been doing. Get started with Langsmith. Now, when I ran this embeddings, NVIDIA embeddings, you can find out it uses this inference endpoint, which is integrate.api.nvidia.com. And then it uses this model. It uses embed QA E5 V5. That's the model it uses is embed QA and truncate none dimension. So for embedding, I'm using this model from NVIDIA. Uh, feel free to use any other models, which is supported by Langchain embeddings actually. Then I'm using the text splitter. I want to split that. So we have to split this text, right? So we have text splitters, we have documents, vectors, that is we are creating a vector and we are using fast to store that. We are not persisting anything into the memory right now. We're just running it on a fly uh, in this runtime. And you can see retriever. So if you look at the retriever, it uses FAS, NVIDIA embedding such target. This is what it is. Uh, chat NVIDIA model, you can see GPT OSS 20B. And this is how the model that, that has been loaded. You can see this is the model we are using from this inference endpoint. Now, if you ask this model dot invoke, it'll be more about, uh, more about you. Reasoning content is really interesting. It says, the user says, tell me more about you. They want more information. And uh, it gives this, if, it's, if you see this. So I know, need to respond with a friendly explanation. I am Chad GPT, a large language model trained by OpenAI. I can answer questions, provide information, etc. A lot of etc. have been used here. I have seen this. You know, a lot of etc. they have used in this reasoning content, actually. You can see it over here, etc. etc. Uh, I don't know how they have written it, etc. Here, here, everywhere. So this is my hybrid template. Now for, for, for building this rag, retrieval augmented generation, which basically accounts both retrieval and generation, right? I have been using a principle called HIDI, hypothetical document embeddings. Uh, and if you, if you see this is very famous, actually HIDI retriever, uh, that helps you build better rag systems. If you look at here, it says this example shows how to use the HIDI retriever, which implements hypothetical document embeddings. Uh, and you can find it out in this paper. Uh, and it's really an interesting concept. What it does at high level, at a high level, Heidi is an embedding technique that takes queries, it takes the query, let's say ask the question, takes the queries and generate a hypothetical answer for that question. And then embeds that generated document and uses that as a final example. Fantastic, right? So you can see it over here. You can go through their responses huh, in, in this one. So I'm on JS line chain. You can read anywhere about Heidi. Uh, it will explain actually. So I'm using high templates. If we look at here, I have even if you don't have the full answer, generate a one paragraph hypothetical answer to the below questions. And then we pass the questions actually, right? Uh, you can see it over here. And then we use the high, we, we have to create this prompt. So we are using chat prompt template from Langchain community. And you can see we are just passing that to make sure that this prompt is now compatible uh, in the Langchain ecosystem, right? Now we have a high query transformer. In, in the transformer, it transforms the query basically. It takes your Heidi prompt, creates chain basically. They're all pipe that we have been used. We have been using this pipe to create chains. So Heidi prompt, then we are passing the model, which is the GPT OSS model. And then we are, let's say, passing the structure output part so that we need structured output, right? So this is what it is. And then this is how you create the chain basically. You know, so I have a function and then I'm using a decorator here for chain that you see, decorator. And you can see it's a callable function. Heidi retriever takes a question here, question hypothetical document and then we use this Heidi query transformer dot invoke and then pass the question and then just it gives the retriever right? that's what we are doing 
and here is the template for the answer basically you know to take the context and question so that's like a rag kind of a prompt that we need and then we again do the same thing so we create two chain one is for hide the query transformer and that is for retriever and then we create one for answer chain that you see it over here that's what we do right exactly so that's that is what it is so come back come back come back here and then if you look here we have our final chain uh, that we use documents invoke question uh, and then it have a function if, if it also checks if any document has non empty page content so skip that and then we use this you can see see it over here we have retrieved documents document have been retrieved and then asking how can langsmith help with testing so you can see it says langsmith help you test LLM applications in several ways, evals, observability, and prompt engineering. How, if you come back here, these are three things that you see, observability, evals, and prompt engineering. So it's not a hard-coded answer, or it's not a answer from LLM, but it's answer from retrievals, because you will exactly see the same thing over here, right? Observability, evals, and prompt engineering. And that's what it just tells you here, uh, which is fantastic, right? So, this is how I just built it, Heidi based rag using GPT-4 OSS, and also also have a final uh, graduate application finally that also has like this. You see, it opens a graduate application. You can ask the same questions. Uh, you know, it will answer it or ask any questions. Uh, graduate. This notebook will be available for you, so you can test it out. Let me just download this notebook for you. I'll keep it so you can use it. This GPT-4 OSS rag using Heidi and NVIDIA based on NVIDIA name microservices, right? Inference microservice, which is amazing. Uh, I like NVIDIA name uh, basically because you can also self-host it through Docker if you have compute, uh, do that. So this is the graduate thing, guys. Uh, this is where it's available on NVIDIA name. If you want to use it, this is the way we that I took. If you want to learn about Heidi, go through it. Right, and this is where you can try GPT OSS. It's called GPTOSS.com. I'll give the link in description. You know, it's it's amazing, right? Because open source, uh, you can use it through transformers or you can use it through VLLM. You can see this is how you can do it through VLLM. So VLLM is also amazing, to be honest. For, for that, you need a 14 GB of RAM to use VLLM, the 20 GB model. That's what you need. And for Olama, the same thing, actually. Okay, so you need higher compute to run this, basically. It's not available on like 16 GB of RAM having because most of your other apps will, you know, consume that RAM. So go through this notebook. Let me know if you're able to build it. If you are facing any you know, challenges by building this rag using GPT-4 OSS, you can let me know. You can wrap this up in a fast API API and hook this into a React application or a Stimulate application or whatever application you are building. And you can say that you have built a rag using GPT-4 OSS. That's what it is, guys, right? I hope you liked uh, the video. If, if, you know, if you have any questions about it, let me know in the comment box. You can also reach out to me through my social media channel. Find the information on channel banner and channel about us or in this video description. All right. Please hit the like icon if you like it. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe the channel, guys. That motivates me to create more such videos. Let me know what you are building with GPT OSS in the comment box. That's all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next one.